because certain things that I was seeing, I thought that there was a problem with the machine, but it was like the upper flipper was stuck up. He's like, no, that's what the boss does. I'm like, I'm like oh, well, that's cool. Okay, or is it a problem with the machine? <laughs> don't, don't you lie to me, man. It's not going to be good. So Turner Pinball was there with their Ninja Eclipse. They had two games there. And this was honestly something that I wasn't expecting to play or do anything like that with. But I was like, oh, you know what? This was here at TPF last time, and I failed to get a chance to play it. It was one of those where when I first saw it, it was like very obviously early stage of like homebrew development of the game and i was like oh, i'll come around and play it but i never got a chance to play it at tpf so going from what i saw at tpf in march to october of right now they've come a very long way and honestly i like what i see now of course the big thing that everyone sees of course is the cabinet on any machine. That is the first thing that we're going to judge a pinball machine by is what we can aesthetically see right in front of us. So if we are accustomed to the typical, like let's just say Stern as being the default cabinet, hinges, side rails, the way the glass comes out, lockdown bar, coin door, we're just accustomed to that being the standard. It's only natural that when we see something else, we kind of get the little bit of a, I don't like this vibe. Now, from the public, it's like they just weren't liking the cabinet. That was the main thing that I heard. And I think it's got to do with the fact that when we see this style of cabinet, no coin door, the cabinet is basically shorter, It's it makes it seem like it's a cheap product, like it's a mere toy. And, and let's just face it, guys, these are toys. They're really expensive box of lights. They're toys. That's what they are. They're for entertainment, whether you want to admit it or not. These are big toys, okay? So, but seeing this style with Ninja Eclipse, it's very reminiscent to the Zizzle pinball machines, like you've seen them with... Um, like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, I remember seeing that uh, years ago. And I've even seen it on for sale recently and stuff. So you see that and you kind of go, uh, you kind of get that at least vibe that it's something like cheap and cheap hardware and stuff like that. But once you look inside, which I'm sure a lot of you didn't when you were there at the show, I managed to get uh, a complete walkthrough of removing the glass, but it's actually plexi, um, and the whole process of lifting up the play field and maintenance and stuff like that. And that's where I was like, you know what? I, I'm liking what I'm seeing. From a technician perspective, maintenance to operate on this game, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Because everything is easy to remove, including the play field itself, in case for whatever reason you had to do some kind of major overhaul to it or whatever. And the ease of access to getting the play field glass off i thought that was pretty nifty at first too it's like at first i didn't understand how it was working i was thinking it was kind of like the deep root glass that they were wanting to do with the hydraulics that lifted up um this is not the case you have like a hook i say a hook you have a handle underneath where the coin door would be underneath the bottom of the machine that you would pull and that releases your play field glass and the lockdown bar all in one piece. Now, if you had a stuck ball, then you'd be able to just reach down, pull up, lift up, go underneath there, get the ball loose and put it back down. Good to go. You wouldn't have to slide it all the way out, put the glass somewhere or anything like that. I, a part of me wants to just geek out and you're going to think that I am like totally just trying to like shill for something here, but I'm just being real when I say that I like what I saw. I'm seeing the potential. I don't think they're ready for mainstream yet. Not quite, but they're getting there, especially going from what I saw at TPF to what I'm seeing now in October. I'm liking a lot what I'm seeing. You've got the built-in lights. It's kind of like, let's just call them pin stadiums, but the built-in pin stadiums that are attached to the top panel that you can remove and they have contacts near the lockdown receiver bar 
that basically make contact. I almost, it's, it would be easier if I just kind of showed you the video as they're walking me through how everything works. So instead of me just jibber jabbering, uh, let's just do that. So. See that kind of just pops up yeah. on the car, huh? There you go. Is it on hand, like? It's just riding on the edge of the wood here. There's a, okay, so. There's a route carved into the back here that kind of keeps it captured when it's down. So if I, if I could let go of this, it'd be bad, wouldn't it? Kind of uh, thing. Okay, that's what, trying, that's what I'm trying to say, so. Yeah, in order to get it. Oh, oh! oh. All right. Hold on. And you can just pull. Oh, so the objective isn't to raise it up. It's like to. I was thinking deep yeah. root. Okay, all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you, can, uh, you can raise it up if you just want to do a Yeah, to get in there and then you can lower back down again. Okay. Our trough, our trough is all here on the top side, so you can just grab all your balls in one go. Don't have to stick your hand inside the window and try to flip them. Counting for it. Yeah. Once all your balls are out, then uh, just raise it up without a handle. Just go ahead and grab it. And a little handle. Mm -hmm. Just put it on the edge. Just pull it out until it stops. This wooden frame is built into the back of the play field. Uh, this actually holds it all in place. It rides on the bottom of the cabinet. Or, uh, the cabinet itself is actually plywood, not MDF. This frame, you can work on it outside of the uh, cabinet if you want to. You don't even need a rotisserie. This play field was actually built using this frame and we actually didn't even put it in a rotisserie to build it. It'll sit standing straight up on a bench, it'll sit on its side on a bench. Uh, if you have it laying flat on the tabletop, it'll actually sit about five and a half degrees so you can even uh, test the shots and the roll of it. But, uh, it all comes up plugged with three wires and then you just pull it out. Let's it's, bring this down, I want to get it over the back box. All right. The back box is very uh, organized as well. All right. So. It's, it's smooth, like the movement is mm -hmm. smooth. Oh yeah, you know like the normal rails are real jerky. And yeah. like, there's that hump you gotta like yeah. get over. Yeah. I, 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 I always have to like lift it up so That's I can move it. Yeah. Too. I'm like, I just feels wrong. Oh God. <laughs> My favorite shot is You want to try to latch this? Yeah, sure. Okay. Go ahead and just carefully right. grab it kind of towards the middle and then carefully like rest it on. You can slide it back. Just kind of get it centered and then take your hand and a firm press right in the middle. There you go. Uh, there's no, there's no way. I didn't hear a click. There was no satisfaction. I need that kinetic satisfaction where it's chunk like, oh yeah, it's on there. Yeah. I thought I, this really loud. Okay, all right. I, I was like, I was like, something's missing. So take a look at the back. All right. So we've got a power supply, we've got our main router board, and then the computer. And it's kind of unbelievable because you know what other pinball machines look like, mm -hmm. but it's just power. This is the subwoofer and the cabinet, and that's your that cereal. Line. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's the whole connection between the back box and the cabinet. You can just disconnect these three, and this is just a circuit board here. It stays there. You just pull them out, uh -huh. and the whole back box comes on. I'm kind of curious, so like, so is this just a board? Is this like a pass through where it can? Yeah, yeah. On the other side, there's three more connectors. So it's a mail yeah, going in. Yeah, it, yeah. I just thought it'd be nice to have that there instead of just running. So this is the computer you're running off right here. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, we got our power supply, the power filter board. Is that fan loud like Stern's? Yeah. Or the one that Stern uses? I say, I say Stern's. Power supply. All right, well. There's something about that fucking fan. <laughs> I don't I like those. The first day, mod. Yeah, it's it's take started. this fucking fan out of this damn power supply. She walked in, she's like, what does that sound? That's the new game I haven't changed the fan on yet. Yeah, yeah so we got power, that's the sub, and that's the communication bus. So we just disconnected them all. Mm -hmm. Close this up. Wait, I can see it because you don't have the whole, yeah. Okay. It's got a handle right on the top.
So there you go. That just kind of shows you the things that I found interesting, mainly when it comes to from a maintenance perspective on this. Now, of course, the big concern a lot of people have with this is the no coin door, especially for you operators out there. How are you supposed to be able to utilize this machine to make money? And that's where they bring in their pin access app that they would like the public to download, learn how to use and use it for payment methods. I don't see that taking off really quick. So I highly recommend that they do this. They are speaking about doing it, and that is making an arcade edition of said machine by adding the coin door and giving people the ability to use coin drop methods. But that is going to require a little bit of re-engineering when it comes how the playfield glass comes off and on and stuff like that. And so there's just going to be some re-engineering that's going to be required in order to make the cabinet have a coin door and give the operators the ability to use coin drop. But if you are a home user like myself or you out there and you can do without the coin door, then you can have the cabinet that you see currently right now. And I bet there's concerns about what you see in the back box, but the fact that it's kind of like open in the back and how that's not going to look very appealing from behind uh, that depends on where you place it. Like, I would never see it if I had it on against a wall right here, and that would probably do a little bit of a light show against the wall. Maybe. I don't know. But that's the way I look at it from that perspective. Otherwise, they may need to put something back there to kind of, I don't know, make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. But then wanting the public to download an application to their mobile device in order to play this game, I do not see that going well. There are plenty of people out there right now going to arcades and stuff like that that have Stern Insider connected that gives people to utilize it online that don't do it, let alone only be able to play the game if you use the Pin Access app. I, for me, like for instance, on this vacation going to Pinball Expo, I could have gotten like, I don't know, like a 10 or $20 uh, deduction from one of the hotels that we stayed at. But it required me to download a separate application for this particular provider of services or whatever to get the 10 or $20. And I was like, no, fuck that. And I was like, <laughs> I was like I'd rather pay the 10 or $20 more to not download another application in order to save money. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's an inconvenience for me. Like, oh, it's a convenience for us to provide you a 10 or $20 reduction in your hotel stay. Uh, it's an inconvenience for me to download your app. But that's just me. So in a nutshell, when it comes to Turner Pinball, I would just urge you people out there that do not like the way it looks to give it a shot. That's all I'm saying. And hopefully they're able to engineer a cabinet with the coin door to satisfy you guys out there. But all I'm saying currently is that I like what I see with what they're doing and I urge them to continue to keep engineering to do what you're doing and who knows guys they may come up with something that is going to be satisfactory for all of us but I can understand how polarizing it can be for what you're seeing right now because mainly it's different and a lot of us do not like change but aside from the engineering aspect of the cabinet and everything, how did the game play? Honestly, I didn't have any complaints with it. I would like to get more time on it to really feel everything out, but it's a very obtuse layout. It's not your standard. It's definitely not a fan layout or anything, but um, there are still some little tweaks that need to be done. I was going to bring up a particular point about putting a post in front of the upper flipper, but they've already made, been made aware of that and that they are going to implement that. So there's probably still a little couple of design tweaks that they're going to be doing in the future. But when it comes to like even the theme for the game, I, I don't have any kind of issues with it either. I can understand how a lot of you may not find it interesting or aesthetically pleasing. But for me, I, I really like playing this game called Mark of the Ninja. And for me, the artwork style of that really reminds me of Mark of the Ninja. It's a very fun game if you haven't played it and if you care to. I suggest you really check it out. So guys, judging by what you have seen and heard in this video, what are your current thoughts with Turner Pinball? Let me know in the comments section down below, guys. Later. I thought I was done recording, but I realized that I completely, like, 
didn't have information in here that you guys may want to know, and that is the price for Ninja Eclipse. The model that you see is $9,700. It's up there. Let's just say that. And I know a lot of you are thinking, what's going on? You got less materials in the back box, less materials in the cabinet. Why is it so much more expensive? I mean, by all means, that's that's up to them and the pricing for everything the way it is. They did state that if they did go to a standard cabinet, like the arcade edition I was talking about, then essentially the game would actually be like $1,000 cheaper. So if you're okay with having, you know, like a regular play field glass removal and stuff like that, like completely disregarding some of the engineering things that they've added to the game, then you could get the game for like $8,700. So there you go. 